Okay. Uh, today, Pop, we're going to talk about your favorite poem, which is what? The Desiderata, written by Max Ehrman. And um, it was written in 1928, but it became popular as a poster in the late 1960s, early 1970s. And at the bottom of the poster, it said, found in an old Boston church, like 1788. Which was not true. Which was not true. And uh, later it was attributed to Max Ehrman, who wrote it in 1928. And, and I just loved it. I loved it when I read it. I love it today. And I, w I want to have it run through my mind when I have difficult times. But really what I go back to when I had difficult times is the Lord's Prayer, which my mother taught me. So I'll say, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Even though all those words don't really have much meaning for me, but I go back to them when I need some kind of solace. I wish I'd heard the um, Desiderata earlier because I think it's so much more. And um, Okay, I, let's get into it. So it begins, go placidly amid the noise and haste and remember what peace there may be in silence. And far as possible without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. That part used to bother me. What did that mean? It, you know, as far as possible without surrender. And finally, I decided that it means, you know, not giving up uh, yourself. It, you don't, it's not worth that to be on good terms with other people. But otherwise, try to be on good terms with people. And I do. Mm -hmm. Speak your truth quietly and clearly. I try to do that. And listen to others, even to the dull and ignorant. They, too, have their story. Man, I really believe that. And everybody has a dramatic story. It's not like, you know, my life is bigger than yours. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a dramatic story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. I think that is so true. I call those people assholes. <laughs> and, I, and, and when they're loud and aggressive, I, I don't want to be around them. Mm -hmm. If you compare yourself with others, and this I remember all the time, if you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. That's my favorite part. Yeah, and so true. But what is, what is good is if you must compare yourself, compare yourself to what you were before. Compare yourself to you. I think it's very human to compare yourself to others, but it's a dangerous game. It's dangerous. It really is. Because as it says, you may become vain or bitter. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Good. <laughs> Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. I think that's so true, and I really feel that all careers are, as long as they're not immoral or illegal, they're honorable. And, you know, sometimes our society looks down on certain uh, careers like the garbage man. Well, how important is that job? Really important. Yep. So it's, yeah, keep, keep interested. In it. I am with you on that 100%. I think about that a lot. Exercise caution in your business affairs for the world is full of trickery. Yeah. But let this not blind you to what virtue is. This part almost makes me cry because I think this is so true. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I know that's true. Be yourself, especially do not feign affection. And neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. And you can be in love and fall in love at any age, young, old, five years old, 80 years old. I know people who have who've done that. What does it mean it is, it is as perennial as the grass? Perennial, a perennial plant comes back every year. It lasts forever. An annual plant only lasts one year. Ah. So perennial is a grass everlasting. Got it. Everlasting. Take kindly the counsel of years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Yeah. You know, you want to feel well and you want your body to work well, but when you're 40, you want, you're 40. And don't try and not look 40. Yes. And, and for Halloween, I had uh, Cameron dyed my beard black and put on uh, uh, eyebrows and so on. And a guy at the party, this was, uh, shoot, Paul's neighbor, uh, Sandy, he said, George, you really look younger with your beard dyed black. <laughs> I said, Sandy. We're outside in the dark, and you have on dark glasses. You can't really see me. I look like a fool up close. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, take kind of the counsel years. Don't dye your hair. Yeah. Don't get a wig. 
Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune. Yeah. But do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. I think that's true. And nurture strength of spirit, for me, that means the, the, the idea that things will get better. If mm. this is rough, if this is bad, well, it's going to get better. Just like I have this broken leg, it was really a difficult, it's going to get better, and it is. I love this next part, too. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. If you're gentle with yourself, you'll be gentle with other people. You are, and I love this one, you are the child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars, and you have a right to be here. And that's what I'd like all my children to feel. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. So what's happening is is it's what should be happening. So there's, is that a little fate kind of thing? It is. And, and for me, it just means accept what is happening. Yeah. Accept it. And whatever your labors, oh, excuse me, therefore be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be. I don't worry much about God. And whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul with all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams. It's true. It is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. That's it. Straight palm. It is. And when you were a teacher, would you show that to your students? I did, yeah. We went through every, uh, every day we'd do one sentence from it. And what did it mean? And what did people think it meant? And mm -hmm. they'd have to uh, write on it. And, and then I would give extra credit to anybody who would memorize the first paragraph. I'd <laughs> give a lot of extra credit if they'd memorize the whole thing. It's about 300 and a few words. I did have it all memorized at one time. And um, nobody ever did that. But a lot of people didn't memorize <laughs> the first paragraph. Go past the amid the noise and haste. And you were at peace and maybe in silence. Yeah. I, I think it's really optimistic. And overall, it is very seen like against pretentiousness and uh, embracing some amount of humility. Yes, I think, I think that that's, that's true. I, I haven't heard anybody say, oh, that's really stupid or stuff like that. One time, by the way, uh, when I was still teaching, I had a package delivered to my classroom, maybe you know about this, and one of my students who I'd had like six years before sent me the poster of it. I didn't have the poster, and uh -huh. he sent me the poster as a present, and I thought that was such a cool thing to do, yeah. and uh, you know, I've forgotten that student's name, <laughs> but I, I remember things about him. He was a neat kid, and I knew his name, you know, 20 years ago I knew his name, but now I don't know his name. Yeah. Okay, that's the Desiderata. Thanks. My dad's favorite poem. <laughs>